to our demo on color correction in Premiere. To get started, we're going to move from our editing workspace to our color workspace. Simply use our drop down and click color. Now, if things look a little strange, you might want to reset this to the saved layout. First, let's just take a look at the clips we're working with. And I'm just going to scrub through these really quickly, give you an overview. And then I want to show you where we're headed. So let's dive in. Let's talk about the goal of color correction and what we really need to do. Our goal with color correction is to match what we really see. That's always our first step. And we want to correct in a specific order. So let's get set up for this. I'm going to start with this clip. And I want to set up my Lumetri scopes to look at a few things. So using my settings wrench, I want to make sure in this window I have my waveform and I want my waveform set to Luma. Now Luma reads darks and whites. So across this clip, this is the reading of lights and darks. Our flesh tones are about 65 to 75. Next, we'll add our parade RGB. RGB reads black at the bottom, white at the top. If you have something that is too blue, it'll look really cool. And you can see we have a lot of cool in this. Finally, we'll add our vector scope YUV. This appears as a color wheel, and our flash line reads right here. Now these scopes are already telling us some things we can see with our eyes. So one of the things we're noticing is we're not really seeing a lot of pure whites. And you can see that up here. We're also not seeing a lot of contrast and we're seeing that with our flesh line. So as you edit clips, you're gonna ask some questions. You're gonna look at this clip and ask yourself, okay, what in this clip should be white? What should be black? Where should it be bright? Where should there be contrast? What should the colors really look like? Is there a color cast? Is there too much or too little saturation? With these questions in mind, we can begin to correct. And we're starting with our basic correction tab. Now, if you don't see that automatically, just click on basic correction and we'll start from there. So our first thing to correct is our contrast. So we're going to correct our contrast, then our color balance, then our saturation. You can see we've already had some auto corrections in here. We're just going to reset all of those and start at the beginning. So I'm going to increase the exposure on this clip and the contrast. And we can always change our zoom if we want to get a better idea of this. Little tweak of the highlights. Definitely need to bring some shadows in. Bring up the whites, bring in some blacks. So already I think we've done some good correction here. So let's just give it a little reset. That's before and that's after. So you can see we've made some, some pretty good corrections here already. Now let's look at our white balance. So a great place to start with that is to use our eyedropper. And we're going to come in and pick what we think should be white. And already we can see such a difference in our flesh tones. Now these are starting to pull right here. We've got some rosiness in her cheeks. 
And in this case, we might want to bring up some saturation just a little bit on this clip. So that's the basic workflow of a color correction. As you correct, you want to correct each shot individually and then look at all shots as a whole. Let's go through our next clip. So I'm going to reset, and in this case, we have a really dark photo, but I want to be aware that I don't blow the sky out. So we're just going to open this up a bit. I'm liking that a lot. Let's see what we can color pick with. That's nice. Bring up some saturation. So I'm liking that correction. Let's give it our before and after. So before and after, big change. And finally, this clip is just a little red toned. Now, we don't want to take all of that tint away because he is standing in front of an oven, but we want to bring it down just a little bit. So most of our work with this clip is going to come with the color correction rather than these corrections. But, you know, I'm keeping an eye, making sure that I have full black, full white, that I pulled all this. You can tell we've got a lot of red in this clip. And so again, I can use my white balance, or if I wanted to, I could just use my sliders. Now, I like that correction. Let's do our before, and there's our after. So once you've co corrected every clip, you're ready to work on the mood, the overall aesthetic, the tone, the look, the feel. And this is where you can start getting really creative. So let's open up our creative tab. Now one of the things you want to do when you're adding looks is to make those consistent across your entire piece of work. And this is really more of a creative addition. So not something that you're gonna use in some hard news, but it might be something you use in documentary or advertising to create a look or a mood. My favorite technique when I do this is to add an adjustment layer. And one reason I like doing this, if we look at these three clips, they are very different. So adding a creative look to them is going to help with the overall aesthetic of this. So I'm just going to come down and I'm going to add a new item and it's going to be an adjustment layer. It's going to be the same size as my clips. And I'm just going to drag that into place. Now it looks like nothing is on there and that's exactly how it should look. We're going to apply our looks to that adjustment layer rather than the clips. As I drop down, you can see I have all kinds of different looks I can apply. And so let's just try a couple of these film looks and see how those look in each clip. And that's kind of interesting to me. And so we can Let's look at another one. Not a fan. So you can see how these looks can kind of create unity among those clips. And then we can adjust the intensity of that as well. So order, get in there, edit the basics, and then apply this creative look to really create a cohesive mood or tone to your video.